Boeing of Monday, June 28th, 2010. I'm Molly and this is Rocket Boom. Good evening, I'm Ken Bastida. Dana is off tonight. He was murdered and then set on fire while celebrating his birthday. Not true. As you may have noticed, YouTube successfully defended itself from the $1 billion claim brought on by the Viacom lawsuit. The case was thrown out. As expected, the court decided that YouTube is protected by the safe harbor provision of the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. Although YouTube is free from paying damages to copyright holders, they are still obligated to remove content that could potentially violate said copyrights, as long as said copyright holders prove it's theirs. As you may have noticed, a billion dollars is a pretty big win, but behind the silver lining a huge amount of hope and freedom for the democratization of all forms of content has been secured. There's a lot of grey area with copyrights, fair use, mashups, and the use of content in general. Whether you are citing a quote, aggregating it, hosting a platform where users paste it into comments, or even just passing it on to friends. If not for the DMCA, which protects websites and internet services from having to check every single piece of user-generated content, we would not have sites like YouTube, Wikipedia, Dig, Twitter, Facebook. None of these would exist because they would be sued every day by litigious copyright holders for copyright violations every time some user breaks the website's agreements. The DMCA implies that if you are a copyright holder, you cannot sue a website for violating your copyrights on the internet out of the blue. You must first contact them and insist the violation be rectified. Which means we are safe to pursue the use of property like the Viacom logo, for example. Should we believe such use falls within the guidelines of fair use? And without having to ask. Like this. And like this. And like this. And this. And this, and this, and this. User-generated content may have won the battle, but the war for freedom of expression carries on. A 32-year-old Swiss man named Oliver Fricker has pled guilty to tagging the side of a train in Singapore's MRT subway system. Fricker's whole car piece seen here has earned the artist five months in prison, plus a minimum of three lashes with a cane, a form of corporal punishment considered by most of the rest of the world to be cruel and unusual. In 1994, American Michael Fay received the same punishment for the same crime, becoming one of the most talked about news stories of the year, spoofed by Weird Al Yankovic even. Tactile sensations can influence our decision-making abilities. Assistant Professor of Marketing at MIT, Joshua Ackerman, conducted six studies with the help of Harvard psychologists and found that the sense of touch plays a strong subconscious role in how we make judgments. In one study, test subjects were asked to review resumes. Some held heavier clipboards while others read from lighter ones. Ackerman found that those job applicants whose resumes were reviewed while attached to heavier clipboards were generally perceived to be more serious. In other words, the feeling of the weighty clipboard is interpreted abstractly by the brain, evoking concepts of stability. And as you can see, this reinforces Marshall McLuhan's maxim that the medium is the message, even when you are talking about the democratization of clipboards. South Korea began blasting pop music across the demilitarized zone to North Korea in retaliation to the torpedo that sunk the South Korean Cheonan patrol ship on March 26th. Not just Love Not War, a giant wall of high-powered loudspeakers has been playing the song Ha huh by the K-pop group 4 Minute, which contains the lyrics, I do what I want, I do it my own way. The idea is that songs about such free-thinking concepts will cause North Koreans to question the authenticity of their state-controlled information. Because of North Korea's restricted access to any outside media sources, no one is quite sure how North Korea will react. Wild falsehoods are regularly abound. When interviewed about his coaching techniques, for example, General Secretary of the North Korean Football Association Kim Jong-soo told ESPN that coach Kim Jong-hun receives coaching advice from Kim Jong-il himself, using cell phones that are invisible to the naked eye, invented by Kim Jong himself. Believable, sure. Implausible, more certainly. In news of the comically irrational, 18-year-old Middlesbrough resident, formerly known as Michael Harvey, changed his name to Bagheera Anthony Darily Dunkable for a mere £40 bet. Mr. Dunkable adopted the new name, inspired by the panther from the Jungle Book and a brand of cheese snacks. Good judgment comes from experience. Experience comes from bad judgment. Take this note and run while you still can.